Hello, in this OpenGL video, we are going to show you how to draw a cube. A cube is basically a set of squares. That's all it is, or more specifically, a set of quads. So even though we're dealing with a cube, you can easily manipulate the code from this video to draw a cube board. And we actually recommend doing that because it'll help you improve your skills if you tinker around with it. So what we've already done before this video is just set up some controls. This will just allow us to rotate our cube because otherwise we'll just have a static cube and we can't see it fully. So we're just going to be able to rotate it, rotate it using the arrow keys. But we're not going to be explaining any of this stuff because this video is purely about creating a cube. So what we're going to do is actually do a function declaration at the top called draw cube and we're going to make it dynamic so we can set the position easily without having to do a lot of modifications we can also change the size of the cube again without having to do many modifications and actually draw the cube several times if we want to or draw several instances of a cube almost so we're going to do gl float this is going to be the center position and do gl float center pos y gl float center pos z and the final parameter that we will need is gl float edge length and the edge length you can think of it if you think of a quad or like square each of the sides is an edge so each of the sides of each of the faces of the cube or the cuboid is the edge so this is the edge length right here we can copy and paste this down below here and what we're going to do this will actually be called from here so draw cube and again remember it requires a few parameters first the center position I've already got some variable set up here which is the half the screen width and height because we're just going to center it so we're going to put half screen width half screen height for the z value i'm going to put it further away than the origin i'm going to put it at a negative value i'm going to put negative 500 and finally the edge length i'm going to set to 200 so there we go and now in here we can actually start drawing our cube First thing we want to do is create a GL float variable called half side length. Pretty simple stuff. We are just getting half the sides length. And the reason we're doing this is because our cube or our position is the center of the cube. To get to any one of the faces, we don't move the full edge length. We only move half the edge length because we're already halfway in the x-axis, halfway in the y-axis and halfway in the z-axis. So now what we're going to do is create an array of vertices. There are going to be six vertices in total. There are six faces in a cube or a cuboid and each face has four vertices. So six times by four is 24 vertices. Equals. If you haven't seen the video covering drawing quads definitely recommend that you check that out because a lot of the stuff that is going on in this video is just built on top of what you learned in that video so first of all we're going to draw the front face front face and for this we're going to draw the top left first, so we're going to put center pos x minus half side length, center pos y plus half side length, center pos z plus half side length. Put a common thing top left. And we can just copy and paste this and just modify it accordingly. So copy, paste. This is going to be top right. So we're going to go in a clockwise direction. Bottom right. 
no bottom left now for this so we got the top left for the top right we need to add the half side length because we're going to the right now we don't change anything else the z value doesn't change at all for the front face because it's all, all the vertices are in the same z position next for the bottom right it's plus half side length but minus in the y position axis because we're going down now and for the bottom left it's minus there and it's also minus here now for the other faces what we're going to do is just keep it simple and copy this instead of writing out again and again and again this is going to be the back face the x and the y values are going to stay exactly the same because it's the same position essentially it's, there, it's just further away so we're going to do minus half side length and now what we are going to do is do the left face for the left face the x position is always basically minus because it's always on the left the y position is slightly different we have plus plus y minus minus that's good and for the z value we need plus minus minus plus because remember two vertices will be on the left in the same position in the z-axis as this one but two will be touching the back face that's the reason they are like this now what we're going to do is actually let me just sort out this comment so let's just say left face we're going to deal with the right face and with the right face we can actually leave all of this as it is apart from where am I looking actually it'd be best if I copy this simply because it's almost identical to the left face so the left face the right face the only thing that we need to change is the x value because it's on the right and you have to add half the side length the y and the z values are the same as the left face so that's all good next we're going to do the top face and for this we're going to put plus and we're going to put plus for the y position it's going to be plus plus because they're always at the top hence the name top face plus minus minus plus is a okay and now what we can simply do is copy and paste that remove this comma here because this is the last set of vertices and all we need to do is change this to a minus minus and minus put this as bottom face and now we need to do GL polygon mode sorry my bad this is just an extra thing that we'll be doing in a moment GL enable client state and um, for this we need to put GL underscore vertex array as with anything if you enable it you must disable it so GL disable client state gl underscore vertex array and in here we're going to start drawing our object we're going to put gl vertex pointer for the size it's going to be free because we have x y and z value for the type gl underscore float stroid is zero i'm not going to really explain any of this because this is all covered inside of the quad video and our other drawing videos next and finally we we'll do GL draw arrays GL underscore quads GL first is zero and we are dealing with 24 vertices so semicolon make sure the code is right here and now we're, we're ready to run this and you might be thinking what's happened or the lack of what has happened because nothing is getting drawn the reason for that technically it's getting drawn but the reason we can't see anything is due to 
our clipping planes. So the near clipping plane is set to zero, the far clipping plane is set to one. So what that means is anything before, let's say the position of zero is clipped, aka it's not drawn, and then anything beyond one is clipped as well. And as you can see, if you look down here, as you can see, we've drawn the cube at a value of minus 500, or you can think of that as 500 going into the screen and as a result we need to increase this value we don't need to put a minus we need we just deal with positive values for this so we need, i'm going to put 1000 because if we're going in minus 500 or 500 1000 will be more than enough to see the cube and anything beyond that and there we go we have our cube and now i'm going to start rotating it and as you can see it's hard to see that it's a cube that's the issue because it's all a solid color every single face plus because there's no lighting we can't we don't have any shadows so d the depth of our cube is not really illustrated so what we're gonna do is just do a little bit of a hack it's not a hack at all really so it's an actual feature within OpenGL set the polygon mode to GL underscore front and back put GL underscore line and this will just enable wireframe mode and if you want to actually use this in your application maybe you want to switch between them to actually enable it again you would put gl underscore fill I'll just comment this out you don't even need it but that's just if you do want to use it now if we run this bad boy as you can see we have a wireframe obviously initially it's like this and we have our front face and the back face which is in line with the front face then the other sides which are in line with the various sides of our front face and as a result it doesn't look like a 2d square but it's not if you start rotating it you can actually see it is a cube so that's how you draw a cube in OpenGL we've got a nice little dynamic method so if for example I wanted to set this to 50 so a smaller cube there you go, we have a small cube now. You could actually draw multiple cubes. So I could put one there. And I'm going to put minus 200, why not? Might be a little too much. Yeah, minus 100 seems better. As you can see, we actually have two really cool looking cubes. They are actually quite cool. Actually, I really need to stop doing this because I'm just having way too much fun with wireframed cubes. Okay, okay. The last thing I want to show you, so I'm just going to comment and say we don't need this, and change this back to 200, is what would happen if the far clipping plane, far clipping plane and near clipping plane, and this GL author will be explaining in more depth in another video. We'll be talking about orthographic projection and perspective projection, so don't worry, stay tuned for that. But I just want to briefly show you what would happen if I were to set this to something like 600. So our cube is drawn 500 into the screen, but anything beyond 600 is clipped. But if you have a look at our edge length is 200, actually I'm going to set this to 250. So what would happen? Would the cube not get drawn at all? Or would only part of the cube get drawn? Because part of it technically is outside of the clipping zone. And if we start rotating, as you can see, anything beyond the 600 mark gets clipped. So the entire object doesn't disappear. Only part of it starts to disappear. Obviously, the, this is what it looks like in wireframe mode. The principle is exactly the same in regular mode. So if I comment this out, run it. And as you can see, it's beginning to clip the cube. So it's pretty simple stuff. Drawing the cube is really, really easy. Like, we, like I said, got a nice cool dynamic method here recommend that you actually create another method for drawing a cuboid where you can actually set set the different sides lengths and also the different 
faces as well because that would be really cool and it'll really help advance your skills. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on our education platform, sonarlearning.co.uk forward slash question.php. There'll be a link in the description. There'll be another link in the description to the source code from this video and the source code from every other video in this series. So if you missed any of the drawing 2D tutorials, check them out because they will really help when watching this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up click that subscribe button and leave us a comment and as usual thank you for watching and i hope you have a great day